You find yourself being arrested. What should you do? Should you talk? How do you cooperate? Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Hampton Law Firm. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk to you exactly about that. Five rules you should follow if you find yourself being arrested. By the way, if you wait around to the end of this video, I will also give you a free ebook, What to Do If You Have Been Charged With a Crime in Texas. Okay, rule number one, be quiet and don't talk if at all possible. Now, the reason why I tell you that is this, you need to understand that when a police officer approaches you, you're being recorded at all times for the most part. It didn't used to be that way, but nowadays, most police officers will have a body camera on them that is operating all the time. And so as they confront you about things, you're being recorded and all of that information will be used against you if they can get away with it. So the rule is you want to look as you want to look as reasonable as possible while that officer may be acting very unreasonable, makes you look better, makes you look like you're the professional one, even when the cop's not being professional. So rule number one, remember, body cameras are going on all the time. Even once you're arrested and put in the patrol car, what people don't realize is you're being recorded then too because there's cameras that show what the officer's doing. There's also a camera facing back, looking at you in the back of the car. And so we've actually had instances where someone's back there in the car and they're the back of the patrol car and they're talking to themselves or they're talking to the police officer. They're moving around and acting in a certain way. Please understand all of that information is being recorded. Police officers, I can guarantee you, they're gonna forward all of that information over to the prosecutor. That prosecutor is going to use every shred of evidence they can to make you look bad. So rule number one, be quiet, don't talk. Rule number two, be courteous and be polite, especially when the officer is not being courteous and they are not being polite. And so this is really important because generally speaking, if your case were to ever go to a jury trial, jurors like reasonable people and they can relate to you more if you're acting reasonable to that officer, particularly if that officer is being unreasonable to you, okay? So as a result of that, rule number two, it might seem simple and obvious, but always be courteous, always be polite. Rule number three, only answer basic questions and do not offer any additional information. Ties in a little bit with rule number one, but the reason why I say this is, generally speaking, before you find yourself arrested, you're going to be asked a series of questions. There's gonna be some fact finding that that officer is going to attempt to do. Remember, only answer basic questions. Yes or no, basic information, no reason to get into some big narrative or uh, for you to have to get into a long discussion with a police officer because those statements are not only gonna be recorded, but they could be interpreted or misapplied, mis mis really manipulated by the officer to believe, they can believe that you were saying something you didn't mean to say. And so it's very important that you're very careful about that. So now the problem is when I bring up rule number three, people I ask, you know, they'll bring up something to me. They'll say, well, what if the officer starts asking me questions? What if he starts pelting me with a number of questions over and over again? How do I respond to him? What do I say? Do I just sit there with, just keep my mouth closed the whole time? Well, there is something you can say, because here's the thing. Under the United States law, the good thing is about living in the United States, you have certain constitutional rights. And under those constitutional rights, you have both a Sixth Amendment right to counsel, you have a Fifth Amendment right not to have to talk to an officer, incriminate yourself in any way, or to be say anything that could be interpreted as you incriminating yourself. So the reason why I say that is one great response to a police officer when he starts trying to pelt you with questions is you can say, officer, look, I would love to answer your questions, but I do not know my legal rights. And because I don't know my legal rights, I would love to answer all of these questions for you in the presence of my attorney. I've even had clients that I've told them, I've said, in fact, you can even blame the lawyer for this. You can say, in fact, I have no problem answering these questions, but the attorney has told me, my, my attorney has told me in the past, I better not say anything unless he's here. So can we get him on the phone? Is it okay if we have my attorney present before we answer these questions? Now, why is that good? Well, number one, you're invoking your rights. You should never be ashamed of invoking your constitutional rights. Number two, you look reasonable because you're not saying you're not willing to answer questions. What you're saying is you want to answer questions the right way, the way that the law says that you're allowed to answer those questions. Now, okay, now what if the officer says, and this is what happens because I've seen this happen with many clients, is they'll say, I want to actually have my attorney present before I answer any questions. What if the officer says, well, you don't have the right to an attorney right now? We're on the side of the road, you don't have a right to an attorney. That only happens later. How do you respond to that? 
how do you know? Well, I mean, that's the point, right? I think the response could be, like I said, officer, I don't know the law. I'm not saying you're right or, I, or wrong. I'm just saying in this situation, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. And I feel like I'm in a position where I must rely upon what my attorney has told me. Can we please give my attorney a call? Once again, you look reasonable. It's not that you're not cooperating. You absolutely are cooperating, but you want to do it the right way. And plus, it kind of makes the police officer look bad. I mean, think about this for a second. You have an officer who's telling you you don't have the right to an attorney when you absolutely always have the right to an attorney if you don't feel comfortable with a police interaction. And so you're standing on your rights in spite of what that officer might tell you. Okay. Now, so that's rule number three. What about rule number four? What happens now? You're arrested. You're taken to jail. One of the things that's going to happen is you're going to be given an opportunity to make a phone call. You'll call a family member, a friend, someone who's going to hopefully bail you out of jail. Well, what happens then? Rule number four is don't talk about unnecessary things on your phone call from jail. And what I mean by that is your phone call is being recorded when you make that phone call to a loved one, a friend or a loved one to bond you out. And so this happens sometimes where someone in that in just a fit of emotion will get on a call and they'll just start saying all these things. And even if what they're saying doesn't necessarily mean they did anything wrong, you're giving information to the prosecutor who could now interpret what you're saying as meaning he knew about it. One example I'll tell you is we had a client one time that did exactly that. He made his phone call from jail. No evidence to establish he was a passenger in a car. No evidence to establish he had any knowledge of any drugs being in that car. But he kept talking. And the more he kept talking, what did that prosecutor rely upon? The prosecutor was relying upon, sounded like he knew a whole lot about what was going on in that car because of his phone call to his mother from jail when he was trying to bond out. Because quite frankly, the mom wanted to know why she should bond him out. It's really important. Be very careful what you say. You are always being recorded. So that's rule number four. Finally, what about rule number five? What if a detective tries to come and speak to you while you're in jail? This happens sometimes in drug cases, bigger, bigger drug cases and uh, more serious investigations where a detective in that moment when you're being brought over, a detective is aware of the fact that this is an investigation that they're being assigned to. You'll have a detective come over and say, hey, listen, this could go well for you if you just go ahead and give me an idea of what you know right now. Let me ask you a couple of questions. If you do this, please understand, no good deed goes unpunished. If you begin talking to a detective, that information can and will be used against you. You have a Sixth Amendment right to counsel in that moment. You also have a Fifth Amendment right not to have to speak to him at all. You need to stand on those rights. Remember the rule. You are never, listen, no one else is going to protect your rights unless you stand up for those rights. And only you can invoke those rights when someone's trying to come and take advantage of that situation. So that's the five rules. Rule number one, be quiet, don't talk. Rule number two, always be courteous, always be polite. Rule number three, only answer basic questions. Do not offer any additional information. Rule number four, be careful what you say on your phone call from jail. Rule number five, don't be talking to a detective. He comes to you while you're in jail. Remember, he'll use it against you. All right. Now the main goal is what? The main goal when you get arrested is to get out of jail as soon as possible to be able to make sure you are released and go hire a good criminal attorney that can then get into court and fight the case for you to get your criminal case dismissed. All right, I promised you a free ebook, what to do if you have been charged with a crime in Texas. All you have to do is click down into the text section of this YouTube video, give us your email address, we'll be happy to send you over that free ebook. And if you liked what you heard here today, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, I'll send you more great content just like this.